my channel, A Delightful Life. You can find me on DelightfulLife.com and on all the social medias. Today I am going to make a project from my craft along kit from uh, Yvonne Williams' Patreon channel. My, um, if you watch that video, I'll have it linked to my unboxing. But today I'm going to be using some of the chain mail items that I got in that box. And I'm going to watch one of her tutorials and get visited by my kitty cat. This is Frodo. And I'm um, going to try to make these Byzantine helm weave earrings. Well, let's get down. All right, I'm going to start her video and kind of go along with it. I'm going to speed up a little bit through different parts so you don't get bored. But um, if I can figure out how, I'll put the video like down here somewhere um, so you can watch as well. Otherwise, you'll just have to hear it. Sorry, I'm still new to making all of this stuff. So let's see what we can do here. Oh, these blue rings didn't actually come in the kit, but I used this dowel and made some of my own rings out of some wire that I had in the same size. Um, it's decorative, so it's, uh, it's an aluminum wire, and it's not as thick as the 5 16th that she sent me. There, it's, I believe this one is 18 gauge, could be 20 gauge. But it's decorative in the earrings, so it's not going to get like pulled or moved. And since they're going to be earrings, I'm not worried about their strengths. So let's get started. Hey everybody. In this video, I'm going to show you guys how I enjoy making some little earrings like these here. These are a mixture of a Byzantine and helm chain. Um, that is not at all limited to being used just for earrings. Like you could do this for a bracelet or a necklace or all sorts of things. Okay. So let's get started. For earrings, you'll want to have your choice of earring hardware, which back here I have some I have an earring page 301 surgical steel, just not here. <laughs> um, fish hook style ear wires. I have two. These are the 16 gauge, 516 five inch rings in black ice anodized aluminum from the ring ward. I have, and those are going to be open. Um, I have four 18 gauge, 316 just regular anodized and really whatever materials like colors you use that's entirely up to you that's not important for the project and these are open i opened them already so you didn't have to watch me doing that and now we have um these are 16 gauge one fourth inch bright aluminum rings and i have 16 of them I have 16 of them, and, and these are going to be four open and four closed. I have four and open and four closed, and closed, closed for a lot each of the time, side I'll for each uh, and kind of grab it set since there are 16 rings. And she didn't kind of mention that in the video, but I'm pretty yeah, sure that's what she meant. Like, and so what's happening here is I'm actually guys. pushing in on both sides of my pliers to really give it almost a little bit of overlap. Like, if you don't want the ends just butt it up like that, I want them overlapping a little bit. That way they Let's like come in right next to each other. It's not bad. As you can tell, this is my not. Uh, so I'm experimenting with some different camera angles. This one right here is not working out for me, as well as what I would like. I've only done a chain mail a very few times, so just getting used to this. 
So yeah, you can see that one didn't really come together a whole lot. So I'm really stabilizing through my left hand and using my right hand to really push into it. That way it'll give us a much better quality of closure. And the goal here is you want that ring to look seamless. Let's see if I can show you so my ring. Up another four. And whenever I open them, I just bring it around just like that. I try to be consistent about the uh, angle that I open. And keep in mind, if you open and close and open and close a ring a whole bunch, it's going to make a very brittle weak point right here in the ring. So um, if you're just starting out with chainmail, I recommend not working with like sterling silver or like ultra fancy rings um, and uh, kind of expect yourself to kind of burn through um, some rings as you learn and experiment and get the hang of it. I'm trying to get these rings going here. I pause her so I can catch up. She's almost got hers all closed. And I'm still going. I'm struggling. But that's okay. That's what learning is all about. I'm actually glad that my first box was chain mail because like I said in my unboxing video, I have only worked with chain mail like a very couple of times and that was a long time ago. I used to hang out with like a lot of people who did Ren Faire kind of stuff and uh, SCA um, events. And I really was into kind of the medieval thing and doing chain mail for a while. And I realized that it's really expensive and time consuming. So I went to wire wrapping instead because, well, I wasn't that ambitious at the time. I knew that I could do uh, wire wrapping and it was a bit easier, but I was actually I took jewelry smithing classes in college, and that is what turned me on to making jewelry to begin with. And I got to play with all kinds of fire and metal, and that was totally fun. I should mention, um, well, these are my first couple of crafting videos, so I'm still getting used to telling you guys, like, um, you'll need two, ply two pairs of pliers to do this. These aren't the best for doing this, um, just because this one's like super long, so it gets a little uh, awkward. These ones are a little better, but these are the two pliers that I have, so that's what I'm working with. All right, let's see what we're doing next. I've got, let's see if I can get this out of your way. I've got four closed rings for each earring. This one's not closed very well. Four closed and four open in the uh, quarter inch rings. Four open. 3 16 inch and 2 open 5 16 inch. Alright, well, let's see what's next. I'm going to scooch this back just a little bit more. It's going to sit on my lap while I'm crafting. The front. But I'm going to see if I can't pull one out that looks just a little bit closer to these two. Alright, I'm going to skip forward a little bit. Skip forward a little too far. See here, I've grabbed two more, and these ones are perfectly symmetrical to each other. So I'm just going to set those aside. And so now, what we're going to do is we're going to start by taking one of our 18 gauge 3 16 rings, and I'm going to thread on one, two, and three, four of these um, 16 gauge 1 4 inch rings. 
Artichoke. And they're just going to hang there like that. And now I'm going to thread another of the small through. Okay, now we got to close it. Yeah, for future purposes, small, medium, large. <laughs> so we take the blue one. Um, but this is the 16 gauge, 5 16th black eyes. And picking this part up, I'm just going to hook this around the center. It's going to go around the So that it kind of middle. hangs like that. Okay. So we have two rings on one side. And two rings on the other, and then I'm going to close it. Nice clean closure. And from here, I'm going to take one ring for each side, and one ring from each side. See how that kind of just sits like that? So it's going to be. Now, also here, this is another great example. You can see a little bit of white between the ends on this uh, ring. So this is a great opportunity to just push it together until you can't see light. And while she is... I think I'm just going to make one and then <laughs> you guys can suffer through with me on one and then I'll make the other one off camera. So I'm going to set aside the rest of these guys. Alright, let's see where should we go next. Alright, so we have this butterfly out. The blue ring in the middle. Just one ring off each side. I always recommend to folks to fix your rings as you're weaving them. Um, just because I know a lot of the times, especially with this large uh, black ice ring, if I didn't go through and fix my closure there before weaving all this other stuff in, I don't believe I would get another opportunity, but because it's going to be so layered in between other rings. So now that we have this right here, this is a helm chain. Like, I guess there's, there's a bunch of different names for it, but um, this right here is pretty widely recognized as a helm chain. I'm kind of just repeating this pattern. But now I'm going to come off the end here and do a bit of a Byzantine thing. So I'm going to take one of our open weaving rings and just thread it through those two. So we're threading through and these two it. here. And then I'm going to thread a second ring through that same spot. Just like that. Okay, close it. Thank you. 
And now, I mean, this one, it just... Okay. Yeah, put another one in there. Hang on. Thanks for your patience with me. This is like my very second uh, crafting. Well, it's my actual very first crafting video. I have two unboxing videos, but this is my very first making something video. So, it will get better, I promise. Okay, there we go. Two rings attached. Sprung into that position. Um, but you'll have your two rings and we're making kind of hanging it out like off the side. That. It can get pretty tight in here, so if they get crossed, just kind of finagle it a bit until they all lay the way you want them to. There we go. So it's just hanging like that. And again, we'll want a butterfly. So there's, and I said it because it's like a symmetrical wings. This one's going to get pulled over to this side, and then this one. It's going to get pushed over like that, and it's going to continue around until it's resting on either side of our large central ring right there. And I'm going to pick up another medium ring, and you can see as I rotate this, these two that we just butterflied, I can hook through here and there. Just like that. Okay, so we put the one ring through the two in the middle. And then I'm going to close it. Well, actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on the ear hook. <laughs> and now I'm going to close it. So that's one end of it. Alright, now we're going to go to the other end. So just like that. And so now I'm going to come around on the other side and hook through one ring, through the two, and through the two. And I'm going to hook one ring. And it seems as though I told y'all the wrong number of rings starting out, but that's okay. <laughs> and so now, again, I'm going to go through and show y'all how to put a fly on. Alright, so I'm going to have to use some of these guys because, yes, we got the num wrong number of rings, but that's okay. I'm just going to borrow some from the ones that I already made. This one 
one gets a little bead on it, so I'm gonna check my little bead box and see what I've got that I can put on the end of it. go find some beads and I will be right back. Okay, I am back <clears throat> and I brought the earrings. I finished both of them. I added some beads that I had. Let's see if I can get these to focus here so you can see them well. They turned out pretty good, I think. I'll take a picture of them and add it in so you can see. see them a little bit better. And then I also made a variation with a little skull bead. Here, let me show you these ones. I like these ones a lot because I like Halloween and skulls. So here is what the other, the variation that I made looks like. This one has a black ring and I'll take pictures of those. These ones also um, I found a little, nice little bead to put on it there. And then um, the other project that I made so far with the uh, with the rings was I made this um, home flower. And this was pretty difficult. And I don't think it turned out the way it was supposed to, but it kind of, um, I think I'm going to use it as a stand for like a crystal sphere because I can make it like go in. 
and it sits like, um, see how it's raised, like you can raise it up, and it sits like that. So I think I might make it a little uh, crystal sphere holder, but I thought it came out pretty good for my first time. It was very difficult. I don't think I used the right size rings, so getting the last bit joined was like a, an ordeal. <laughs> Um, but all in all, I had fun, and I still have, let me see, I still have quite a bit of rings left. I've made three projects so far, and I still have all of these rings. Of course, I just made earrings and that little helm flower, but I still have quite a bit of rings left over from the kit. So I can make another, like if I were making earrings, which uses mostly these ones, I could probably make another couple of pairs. Um, if I was just using these, I could make a lot, and I might make like a bracelet or something out of these guys. These are the 3 16th inch rings but I'm really impressed and uh, happy with the amount of materials that I got in my craft along kit and this was just my first one I also have this little guy I tried I don't remember what I was where I was going with this one <laughs> I might have to start over because I don't know what it was but yeah I'm very very impressed and happy with what I've got. But thank you for watching my uh, craft along journey here and uh, I'm again going to try to put the video like right in this corner but if I can't well sorry. <laughs> Either way thanks for watching. Enjoy. Have a great journey. Bye bye.